Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 19 uh, is what the 13th of September 2019, it is Friday the 13th, so spooky noises and I'm, <laughs> I'm Ryan the GM, here are my players. Oh, this is my day. Oh, hang on. <laughs> my name's Callum. <laughs> my name's Callum, I play Eric Greenwood, the uh, sorcerer who's a human, and apparently when I'm naked, I smack my hammer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half-elf druid. <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> um, I am Scott. I am playing Crumbar, a half-orc paladin. Hi, yes. I'm Sophie. I play Kit of the Kill. It's a Baxi rogue. Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half-elf monk. I love how our ones of fan at home will be like, wait, Scott's actually here? And uh, in other news as Who? well, we heard Rogue. <laughs> Yay! Such good, yes. such good. I still have um, a million tabs open. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking bad Just for don't you. tell it's him. It's so bad for you. I'll get ripped through them one day. One of them's just full of YouTube videos that I want to watch. Ah, oh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> they oh, haven't God. all loaded up, though. It's only the one that it opened up on. Cause, like, I you know you can save later. those very easily, right? Like, add to see later. So bad. Yeah, but I've got that much in there. I just It's, it's like when you save stuff for later on Facebook. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. All too well. You need an RP browser. <laughs> the end of this conversation. Mm. Uh, so, mostly because this is as big starting our pre-game chat, obviously. No goals or what happened last time? Right, so let's talk about what happened last time. Who remembers what happened last time? I'm I naked. Trees. <laughs> Trees. Trees. I did a lot of healing mm. and running mm -hmm. and trying to shoot at things while running away from them. And surviving. Yep, yep. Ha, 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 ha. Staying alive. Arya tried to hide my nakedness as well, but it didn't work with her bare totem. Um, it worked for a bit. <laughs> for a bit. Well. Wow. Oh dear, Crumbar takes 100 damage. It's, <laughs> 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 it's time to make a new character. Yeah. Yeah, I think the gist of it was we had Eric's lovely aside with his new buddy. Um. And then the fucking king. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't know if that's his official title, but maybe in the right circles. And then, um, yeah, he got himself back to you guys because he thought of the party and he was like, "No place like home." And then he clicked his ruby hammers together. We what? And then, um, wait, what? Yeah. So he managed to join the party right in time for some random trees to come to life in the, the kind of palatial gardens. Of a, the city of Horizon, which is, you know, generally considered a lovely place for magic people, at least. The princess at the end stepped in to make sure everybody survived the ordeal. I why were the trees fighting us? If we had an invitation, why were the trees attacking? It was a test! Right, so why were the trees attacking? Maybe that's something Crumbar wants to sit Because nobody away. told the trees. Also, did Eremos punch something? Eremos oh, fought did. a lot of things. No. But he didn't punch things, right? He no, he did. Things, but he didn't punch... Oh, okay. There's let's say okay. an action called Eremos punch. Oh, yes, it is. I forgot. I forgot. Are I you... just wanted to say no to you, okay? I just wanted <laughs> to say no to you. That's what it was, okay? God damn it. I missed Eremos in a fight. <laughs> oh yeah, that's actually worse. Yes, yes, he did punch a lot of things. <laughs> Pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, he did really well, surprisingly. Um, probably actually has a better to hit average than Crumbar, to be honest. Yeah, but he has smaller hands. So he has know. really small hands compared to Crumbar. That is correct. <laughs> um, yes. how do they end up fighting? Like, what do you mean? How how come he threw punches about? Because. The party were in danger, and he's part of the party. The party have been in danger before. Do you not remember the abyss? I do. He did get one bombed. He couldn't see in the abyss. Remember that bit? Oh yeah. 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 
Yeah. I was gonna say, do you remember the abyss? I don't. Remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. right. Don't complain about NPCs that were there when PCs weren't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't make me demonetize this video by playing some tricorder noises. So, anyway, uh, yeah. So that happened. Justoria stepped in, introduced herself to Arya. Everything else was KO'd. And uh, how does everybody feel about goals this week? Can we make the goal that I actually stay for a full session? No. That should just be a thing you want to do. Everybody else, what's your thoughts? Finding out why she tried to... You know, as a short-term thing, finding out why she... wanted us there. Mm. <clears throat> yes, no, maybe? This is the part where you guys talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know. Hmm. Anyone else got any ideas? Uh, well, I'm assuming that we should they find out go. why... I mean, I'd like to know why their trees attacked us, but that's not really a goal. The current goal still stands at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Use me. <laughs> <laughs> did you literally just make that? Yes, just yes, I did. It? <laughs> I was so confused. Like, why did it go quiet? <laughs> what, what, what happened? Oh. <laughs> I love it. So, carry on. It's a shame, you. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so to... lost. Uh, check Discord. There's a new, there's a new group. New channel. It's, uh, that's... Right. I'm on your voice channel. The, the current goal still stands. We haven't done it yet. Mm. Yeah. yeah no. see, that, I was going to say if I was so rudely thrown into my own shame <laughs> cube. <laughs> yeah, we I haven't mean, actually spoken to her about the letters yet. So. Mm. Exactly. Right. So just to clarify that that woman that showed up isn't the princess. It may be, no, but we haven't got Oh uh, Yeah, it is. is okay. Yeah, she, she has announced herself. Um, like, are we using the letters to talk to her about the situation? Like, are, they, are, is, are we physically using the letters to speak we, about the situation? We used the letters to get to her. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess, just leave it to uh, talk to the princess about why we were summoned. Well, really, it's a case of do you want to continue with this goal or do you want to change it to something else? Like, for example, if somebody had a revelation between sessions and they went, actually, we should do this, and everyone goes, actually, you're right, then we would change the goal for that to be the focus of this session. But if you are happy to carry on to achieve this one, we'll keep it. That's kind of really the choice at the point. this point. So do you have anything you want to do more than use the letters to speak to her about the situation, which is actually like the abyss? It's just left as the situation. Um, I'm, I'm fine with this goal. Okay, yeah. are you? Yeah, no change is fine. Cool. Crumbar, all good? Yeah, I'm cool with it. Kitty? Yeah, I'm good. Reach? Yay! Cool. Yeah, cool. Good, that was easy. There we go. So keep in mind, think about it that way. Is there something new to pursue, or are we concluding what is ongoing? That is the best way to kind of keep that in mind. It doesn't need to be rewording what's already there. I'm happy to accept a goal has been in progress for several sessions, even if technically at this point the last half of the party's focus on instead of the first half, etc. So don't worry about that. Right. So let us go back to... Let's move the map. Let's move the map back to the horizon map. Why not? So, Arya, you are led into, mm -hmm. and also for the sake of um, narrative uh, brevity, Crumbar was also knocked out during the fight. Hey. Okay. I know, I know, son, I know. So, oh God, why you do this? Okay. <laughs> why, why, why isn't your focus in the game? Come on, I'm sorry. Focus in the game. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, Arya, 
you are taken from the gardens and uh, people in kind of like multicolored robes wearing kind of like se segmented parts of armor all over them mm -hmm. they come and collect your party members to help them along and okay. Gistoria walks with you a bit through the gardens and then you head towards the palace which you know in a dream where you're walking from some place to some place else and weirdly you're kind of there and you don't really remember the transitional phases between mm -hmm. yeah it's like that where you realize you're like being led into like a kind of big kind of drawing room type uh, you know okay. sitting room and it's very um there is a does it feel like magic does it feel like she's like teleported me from one place to another where am i just out of it because i'm injured it's um it is hard to place it Again, the whole place is magical, so the idea of something feeling magical doesn't really tell you anything, if that makes sense. Oh, duh, um, yeah, sorry, I should have realized. That's okay, it's, it's still worth asking, because other people might not remember such things as well, um, so it's always worth the clarification. But the... It would be like bringing out a radiation detector to detect if this one part of radiation was stronger than the area flooded in radiation. Granted, if your radiation yeah, detector is good mean. enough, you would, like, if you had to a sensitive enough one you could tell this thing is five million rads compared to the four that everywhere else is but the the area is this weird humidity of magic anyway so you'd get nothing from that and it's not even like you would necessarily know the humidity is magical it's just that feeling of there is definitely something a bit more to the air here um obviously rolls etc would clarify things right down to the the very specific answers but when you leave like the gardens it's like you were walking in the gardens to the point where you're suddenly led in through two big open doors like a big kind of wooden kind of study type thing um okay so it's a big kind of spiraling library that goes all the way up um to the point where you can't really see the top of it and it okay. looks essentially like a really kind of fancy kind of place to sit and have tea um there's I'll be holding on to Eremos so he doesn't wander among the books just saying e Eremos was taken by one of the Oh shit, yeah, I forgot he was injured as well. I'm yeah. so sorry. It's okay, yeah. What? So wait, so a big tree can pet Eremos, but I can't? Yeah, Eremos was taken out quite early, actually. I say quite early. I think... Was he first down, or was it... Sophie? And by Sophie, I mean Kitty, obviously. No, I think... Kitty got... What was that, sorry? Who, was, who went down first? Got... I forget who went down first, because I know that Arya went down, but she rolled in that 20 and came back. Um, <laughs> I think I went down first. Right, okay. Cool, yeah, and Arya brought you back. And then, uh, yeah, because I think Eremos managed to outlast a couple of people, and then he went down. But it's because they were mostly fighting Reach. Mm. Mm. Is this the trees? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I had to dip out because like, I was an hour ahead of us, so... Oh, in that case like, then, yeah, I we'd, um, we just narratively excused you, which means, yes, you were knocked out unconscious. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that was the first... <laughs> um, but yeah, so Eremos went down, yeah, and he never got back up. Unfortunately, the song was a lie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, back in the present time. So are you, you solely are led in to this, uh, mm -hmm. this room with uh, Gistoria. And again, she's had you kind of like your hand in her palm type thing, you know, uh, with her other hand clasped over it as she walks with you. Uh, the door is obviously open for her. Um, mm -hmm. You go in and there's like a kind of, again, almost like a big cushion with a kind of flat marble kind of slab on the top of it. Um, and then a bunch of kind of cushions arrayed around it, um, slightly sunk into the floor. Um, there's a kind of like standing, almost like very tall vases um, that have blue and kind of like cyan and kind of purple flames coming from them that both mm -hmm. illuminate and heat the room. Uh, and they seem to kind of pulse between the two colours. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a very kind of cosy room. Uh, Fair enough. And you're led there, and she kind of just gestures towards like the, you know, the kind of cushioned kind of table. The kind of the table's only maybe a foot high, if that. Mhm. Mm I think um, I don't want to say the term like hookah den. Do you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that? But mm -hmm. it's very much that vibe that you're getting um, from here. Uh, she gestures there, and she says uh, with her excellent gravelly voice and for everyday again wanting to know what her voice should sound like it should be Shori Agdashlu's voice quite frankly um, she turns and she goes can I get you anything to to drink or to eat 
Um, that would be most appreciated, but I would first like to to tend to my my friends. Um, I I just want to make sure that they're recuperating. So is that um, a thing where she puts her hand up and kind of like as if she's batting a fly out of there, as if to kind of dismiss her? Because you're like, don't worry about your friends; they are being taken very well care of. And she does say it like that. I it's nod my head and thanks. <laughs> well, if it is, there's nothing I can quite do about it right now, is it? Get me some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these strange people? They brought a cat that's too big to be a cat, a child that seemed to be better in combat than the half-orc paladin, <laughs> and a naked man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so she kind of like bats that question away as if, don't worry, they're being taken care of. Uh, and she has like a big kind of warm smile on her face. And uh, she says, first let us tend to your injuries. I once again nod my head and say thank you. Um, may I ask, since we were invited here, why were we attacked? And then you can see, like, she heads over to, like, a kind of part of the wall uh, that's kind of made up, obviously. Again, the bookcases go all the way up in a big spiral, um, as if the wood should be straight when it goes up, but it does seem to just twist when you look up. Um, mm -hmm. Almost like there could be, like, you know, like a kind of photography filter that twists all the light, um, as if, you know, these are straight walls, but then you look anyway, and they're all twisty. So she walks over to one of the walls that kind of just twists into a cabinet that she opens and there's all these different kind of glass bottles and vials and such that she starts to like take out and then uh, that kind of closes behind her and then before you know it it's a bookcase again and she walks over back to the kind of table and she does that kind of very graceful sitting down with her legs kicked out to the side and then she kind of sits two of the glass bottles in front of you and she says drink this and feel better My thanks. Um, she kind of closes her eyes, smiles, and kind of just nods and opens her eyes again. Yeah, I, I mean, ob obviously, I probably would have never seen like a princess in my life, so I'm kind of like completely out of my element when it comes to like, um, like bits know, of the... twigs that you liked in your hair and things like that. I like you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so so I'm, I'm probably like very much out of my element and very nervous and very like stuttering and not really sure how to. Uh, Press her or anything. And you did nearly oh. die. Like that is a thing that did yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and still I'm 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 still in shock and everything. Mm. Um okay, so I'll I I will drink the thing. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Now you're more than welcome to have rolled obviously, um and yes, she's so fucking gorgeous, isn't she? <laughs> um But yes. I mean, just to to check like to me, it doesn't look like she's wanting to poison me, right? That's what I was about to say. Just, if you want just, at any point to roll things yeah, like yeah. insight, you're welcome yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. Like, I, I probably wouldn't have trusted her, like, immediately and that thoroughly and mm -hmm. trust that she means well. As I said, so, feel yeah, free to So, yeah, I'll uh, try to, to roll, roll <laughs> insight and hope that for once I don't muck it up. <laughs> <laughs> so roll a five. She has eyes. <laughs> she is human and she is pretty. That's all I could tell, right? Uh, so, yeah, the how how even to translate a five for your insight <laughs> into what you, you get can from tell her. that there is someone in the room. I think mm -hmm. it's more that you don't. Like maybe like your adrenaline stuff's going because it's not been long since the fight mm. ended. Like it's literally been like a two minute walk or something. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely not been long at all since the fight ended. And yeah, so you obviously maybe just are a bit too shaken. Yeah, I'm still afraid of my own shadow. Mm -hmm. To kind of really get a read on her. Um, she doesn't seem yeah. to be attacking you like trees were. So that's maybe yeah. good. Um, That'll be good enough for me. Yeah, so no, I'll there's no, the no hint of like ulterior motive or anything. Yeah. So I... I'll just be like, okay. Um, you know, she she's she's grasped my hand in her hands, so 
you know, I, I'm 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 in that stage where I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'll let you help me <laughs> and my friends. <laughs> and she, I mean, so, as I said, she's um doesn't seem to be uh, nefarious in any way. I guess is the best way. To and you know, she did save me from the trees, essentially. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's very very true. So, you drink both bottles, yeah? Mm-hmm. Cool. Glug, glug, glug. Glug, glug, mm-hmm. glug. Uh, yeah, uh, you can have the equivalent of a long rest and reset everything. Yay! Like, as you can see, any kind of like wounds or um, even to the point of scars, you can see them kind of undoing themselves and healing properly. Nice. I'm all pretty again. So, yeah, like... That that is definitely a thing. Um, skin <laughs> has never looked better, etc. Um, oh, so it's skincare as well. Brilliant. Yep, like it's proper like rejuvenation that way. Uh, you feel pretty damn good, to be honest about the whole thing. So who knew I was going to get a skincare routine out of this as well? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. So but, I I notice everything and I. You know, Notice express my shut. Up. <laughs> express my 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 thanks for for her assistance in this. I think and, the, um, when you drink the second one, so the first one's the one that knits everything back together. And as I said, I don't know if there's like let's say there was a scar in the back of your hand or wherever would be noticeable, obviously to you initially. Then mm-hmm. that's what you notice, like unpick itself, or like if it was on yeah. your thumb or something. Um, but yeah, like maybe where something's bit I mean, you in the I'm, past. I'm used to climbing into trees and yeah. everything, so yeah, I'd probably have tons of little scars on my hands. Or if something's bit you or something in the past as well. Um, oh yeah, plenty you know I mean? of things probably. Yeah, so it's the type of thing where something obvious that you notice start to like heal itself um, and undo the scar tissue, etc. As I said, that's mm. that's the first one. The second one is a bit like getting hit with an adrenaline shot straight to the heart. Oh wow! Because it's your magic. Yeah, I probably just shouldn't have taken infused. both. Whoops. Um, <laughs> and she kind of just like. As you kind of like do that, maybe like you kind of grip the kind of or put your hands on the table in front of you, and she just puts one of her hands over yours as a kind of comfort, and um, while this kind of like rush oh. passes, um, what color? Like, see if you had to like emanate like magic for your nature powers and whatnot, your druidic ways. Like, is there a color to that, or? See, I think green would make more sense, mm-hmm. but 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 I love purple, so I'm really torn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean you could get like a greeny purple. Let's face it, she has bluey purple everywhere, so. Ooh. I have no issue with. Yeah, that let's one. go dual chrome. Yeah, so we have this kind of like, as I say, this greeny purpley like flash kind of go through you and like pulse through you. Maybe it highlights like the veins throughout your kind of body a little bit, um, almost like kind of branches through a tree, and then, as I said, she yes. just kind of like, as you kind of open your eyes again and kind of like catch your breath a bit. She's just kind of staring again very warmly at you. She goes, there, do oh. you feel better now? Much better, thank you. And she kind of just like double taps like the back of your hand with her kind of, her hand and then she kind of sits back. And then uh, she kind of like waves at the table and then it all kind of like shimmers like a mirage, if you will. And it mm. has different various bottles and kind of decanters and um, plates of kind of like finger food. And the smell okay. kind of hits you immediately. This kind of like warm kind of food smell. Um, oh yeah, I'll I'll probably be I'll probably be quite hungry by now. So mm-hmm. that that will look very well, t- very good to me. Mm-hmm. And she kind of just right. sits and nods, and she says, "Please indulge yourself." Thank you. And I reach and like have some, um, you know, like dainty bits because you know I I'm not completely a savage <laughs> it sounds like she's trying to distract you from not from answering the question of why we were Sh- shut up that was going to be my next thing <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking like we've we've been you know like that and I stress eat as a person so obviously that's going to go into my character as well um, so as I'm like having the first couple of bites and everything probably with my mouth half full because let's face it nobody told me etiquette I'm going to say, so, I'm really sorry, but can I ask, what exactly happened? Why are we, why, why did you invite us here, and why did we get attacked? 
And her face kind of looks sad for a moment when, like, you kind of say that. And she goes, Unfortunately, Horizon isn't quite as safe as it used to be in the last two months. But those those creatures, those trees, how come... How, how come they... Are, are they controlled by somebody? Are they under, under your control? What's... And she kind of um, adjusts a bit uncomfortably, the way she's sitting, and she says... Do you know of wild magic? And she kind of narrows her eyes slightly at you. Uh, I have no clue if I know wild magic. <laughs> Do you want to roll a, um, an arcana check, maybe? Yes, please. Yep, okay. <laughs> that, that's what I was going to ask. I was like, what would I roll to know if I know that? No, nope, I probably don't know a thing. I, I mean, you're, you're, is this the opposite day? Where you just I know. Really <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know what's going on here, but I'll probably say that you know I'm sorry, my lady. I'm not really familiar with Innocent. with the term. <laughs> she um, she kind of like nods, uh, very kind of gently, uh, and she says, "It is not to be confused with your." And she kind of like waves, kind of over at your slightly more druidic. Outlook, shall we say? Okay. Um, and she says, "It is not magic of the wild, but indeed okay. rogue arcane energy." And she kind of like waits to see if it's sinking in or if it needs further explanations. How she's trying to gauge you, so she's kind of just okay. staring a little bit at you. So is this people using forbidden magics, dangerous magics? And then she. Uh, she just kind of sits back and looks a bit as if she's tasted something unpleasant. She says, It very possibly could be, and the fact that I am unsure is why I am worried. Um, would you happen to know who might be at, at blame, who might be doing this? And then uh, she sits there and she says The disturbances started around two months ago. There seems to have been new magic seeping into the world. Okay. And obviously in my head I'll be thinking, two months ago, hmm, we were two months in the abyss, hmm, there might be a connection, hmm, <laughs> but I'm not going to say anything just yet. Um, oh, so this is just but, for everybody, just now, because this is what she currently looks like. Maybe not quite with this super suspicious see? face. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, the purple on. <laughs> she's got amazing purple she's on. She's so course. pretty. Yes. Yeah, she just looks amazing all the time. Um... um Yes. Okay, so I was, I'll ask, um, do you happen to have any suspicions as to the source of these disturbances who might be behind them? And then she kind of like smiles and she says, I was hoping you could enlighten me as to your travels. Well, that is... Definitely something that we've, uh, um, how do I put this? That's definitely something that we'd be, we'd be interested in, in, in knowing more about what's, we are curious by nature. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what sort of disturbances have you, have you witnessed? And she kind of she the, smiles the and she says, "Have we life? witnessed?" And then she yeah. kind of like motions back towards the doors. You have seen what happened to my garden. Yes, yes, that I have. I've, I've, I'm. How do I put that? I've, I've been personally. We, we've been personally affected by that. So uh, definitely noticed <laughs> um is was there anything anything else 
Or is it just your garden that's been affected so far? Is it just in specific places? And she kind of says, My purview is my city, and unfortunately it has me distracted currently with these wild magic surges all over my small but pressing area of concern. And then she kind of like, in front of the table, like there's this kind of like shimmering kind of, uh, again, mirage-like image. And it's Horizon, like from the kind of, you know, map, the, the, the yeah. coastline. It's not like a bird's eye view of the place or anything, because again, that doesn't really exist. But it's like the kind of shot of Horizon from like the coast. And then it's a very kind of, you can never really make out inside the walls, except the central big tower that okay. seems to float in the middle. And uh, she says, this is my current concern. Unfortunately, and then it, the map kind of like zooms away out and you kind of see something like the world map. She says, this is my father's domain. Okay. And so I understand he's also not had any sort of explanation or any assistance he was able to, to offer to you in solving this mystery. And she kind of like narrows her eyes and goes, My father would not reach out to me if he did, but it does not seem like he has made any attempts, hmm. from what I can tell. Now what are you thinking at this point in time as Arya when she says that? She's rolling inside well, I you. find it. <laughs> I find it very weird that she would not be getting, you know, help from her dad. Right. <laughs> she somehow can't rely on her own dad to help her with this thing that's really bugging her. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to disclose to her <laughs> yet alone without deciding with the party what we've learned about the abyss. So. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm trying to be all sneaky, sneaky, not telling her everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a difficult one. And then both vials were truth serum. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so wouldn't that cancel? Wouldn't they both cancel each other out? Then? No, you'd have to tell double truths. Double. Oh man! Oh god! It's the worst truths. The ones where you overshare. <laughs> <laughs> I do that on a normal basis. What are you talking about? <laughs> but now I've made it a game mechanic. So <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, okay, so I um, I'm just going to to ask. So why is it that we've we've been called it here? What is it exactly you would like us to do? And also, why us? Because obviously I'm not aware how we got on her radar, you know. Because mm -hmm. well, they stole a small boy. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> she doesn't seem to have a good relationship with her dad. She probably doesn't even know we stole the boy. <laughs> so her kind of like smile kind of goes into like a kind of straight line across her face. And she says, I can see you have no love for my father. <laughs> Um, what was that, Brian? You cut out a wee bit. I said, I can see you have no love for my father. I'm merely surprised as to why you wouldn't be able to count on his support. And this matter, obviously, is very dear to you. And I, I'm, I'm just very surprised. She kind of like looks down, um, and you can see like she's kind of doing that thing where she's like pinched a bit of like her outfit um, with like a hand as if she's just absentmindedly like tugging at it to fix it. And then she kind of like does that thing where she's like brushing away like crumbs or whatever that don't exist. And then okay. she looks yeah, up at you. Yeah, she's very uncomfortable. Yeah. She looks up at you and she says, If we'll my. Back in a second, guys. If my father. Oh, if my father found out that I was incapable of protecting my city. He would not deem me worthy of his help. 
then we've probably got a harsh cut back to that conversation the Wizard King had with a uh, Eric. <laughs> when you mentioned the fact that Eric was like, "Go help me be cool," and he's like, "Go be cool, and then I'll help you." <laughs> and then we cut back to the scene, and she says, um, "This, in fact, could even be due to some machination of my father." You perhaps think he's trying to test you somehow? She laughs very kind of like warmly again, like a kind of wholesome, kind of a f almost familial laugh. Um, that kind of fills the room. And she kind of uh, does that thing where she kind of stops herself laughing and like adjusts a cushion next to her. And she says, <laughs> No. And that's a. Uh, she then kind of adjusts the way she's sitting, and then she says, "My father is very busy keeping everyone safe." And it's almost like a practice line, that, as if her diplomacy has had her need to explain that many times. And she says, "As for my interest in you and your colleagues." And she kind of like takes a, a sip of tea that's just appeared obviously in front of the table she leans down and picks it up and he sips at it and then she says you have to try the tea and then she kind of nods at the kind of table in front of you is it like a big pot no um, it's literally like a kind of really fancy almost like kind of china cup and um, which is a weird phrase in this world but yeah. okay uh, it's like a saucer and the cup itself. It's all kind of made out of, um, like, I guess, crystal. It all has kind of mm -hmm. almost like dancing patterns all over the outside of the crystal. It's just got the kind of like nice kind of heat lines coming off the top of it. Kind of smells nice. almost like chai. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have some. And then you kind of sip it. And again, it's just like a kind of warm, comforting drink. Um, you know. Almost cinnamon esque, maybe as well, um, to the kind of like spicy kind of side of it, and mm. and she she stops and kind of sits it down, and she says, "It's quite divine," and she kind of nods and smirks at herself a little bit, and then she says, <laughs> "My interest in you and your colleagues is purely based on your travels. There was a very powerful." magical surge and then she uh, brings up that map again and she kind of points in an area which is a, an area that you know of as the bitter woods um, mm -hmm. and for every day that doesn't remember that's where Eremos's tower was and she says there why was... would she point what what sorry can you repeat that you okay is your audio okay Scott because you seem to be struggling yeah no um my concentration is just a wee bit off. I wonder why. Adrenaline. I wonder why. Mr. Yeah, getting hit by a car. Yeah, my adrenaline levels are kind of crashing a wee bit. Uh, sorry, so she point. why she pointed to the woods that Eremos was in? Right, so she explained that there is a, a strong magical surge that she detected. Right, right. There. Um, so then and she says and then again and she kind of like moves her finger kind of down from like the woods down through the water uh, down to a point in the water where she just stops and she goes and here in the Midland Sea another surge of magic wait would I recognize all these spaces as like essentially our journey yep she's skipped the part where you went to Glitterhagen though she's just traced her finger down to the sea And then, well, in, then in she, the sea, I'm assuming that would be the pirate ship. Yep. Was it? Yeah, when we were yeah. attacked by pirates. So then she traces her finger down again, and it stops at the abyss. And she just taps, kind of, you know, the air, if you will, um, on the map. Because just out of curiosity, did she t also tap the place where we were, like, attacked in our dreams? Because I almost thought of bats, dreamt of bats, or whatever. You mean the entire, like, kind of bitterwood area? Yeah, that's why I thought she tapped the wood. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, brain. Yeah, yep. okay. So the bitter wood was what you stepped into from yeah. 
the I just couldn't Lestel remember whereabouts that bit was. So you stepped out of the Celestial Nexus into the Bitterwood, wandered mm-hmm. a bit, found the grove that had Eremos's tower, left that grove, went down south, mm-hmm. um, still at the edge of the Bitterwoods where the kind of dream sequence, if you will, happened, and then you just headed to the <sighs> west to get to Glitterhagen, then went south okay. in a boat. I think she would have been able to sense Eric smacking his hammer. So anyway, <laughs> tumbleweed. So she's, as I said, she taps the abyss. She says, "I was hoping you could explain this part of the journey to me." By this point, I'm guessing that the fact that we actually came back from the abyss when nobody else did—that's kind of news. The sort of news they would. Keep in mind, you had had your letter before that, though. You got your letter before you entered the Golden Citadel. True. Makes it sound as though she knew we were going to get out. And almost like she knew we were going to the Abyss. I don't think we knew that when we went to Glitterhagen. That's like just something that the Golden Word sent us on. Mm. So... That's interesting. Mm Mm-mm. But at the same time, like, I would feel very... I'll never know. You know, not not really confident telling her shit. So I'm not really sure, like, I wouldn't really, in, in character, be very sure how much I should share with her and how much we trust her, because at the end of the day, we kind of as a party consider her dad to be a bit shifty and we don't know if we should trust her, I would think. <laughs> I think uh, that's alright. <laughs> so so part of me is like huh interesting. And part of me is like okay, but how do I find out more without telling her what we know? And then um, I think at that point she sees the hesitation, okay, in your face and she goes, yeah. <laughs> and she kind of like leans forward and kind of like puts her hand on the table and she says, Forgive me. You must be beside yourself with worry for your companions. And then she kind of gestures to the door and uh, the door is open and in walk everyone. Ta-da. Um Yay. You've all got the. Oh, we're alive! The two. And the well. two glass of vials of uh, enjoyment. So, Am I still naked? Uh, <laughs> no. No, <laughs> you. Eric's never been cooler, by the way. As he's been naked all this time. So, <laughs> Eric, you've been kind of wrapped in, um, think... Bandages? No, think kind of like an Indian Mommy. wedding kind of style outfit. Um, like, incredibly nice kind of like silks. Um, but like, almost like a kind of pyjama suit style uh, effect. <laughs> it's not a onesie by any means, as I said. Um, <laughs> well, we... Well, what Ryan describes, that. what do you think of? I know, right? GMs versus players. <laughs> uh, in fact, let me find. Here's this will do, and it can exactly just be this because this is actually gorgeous. There you go. Oh, Damn, I look fucking son. Twinkling. <laughs> yeah. Damn, son. Weirdly, you have the beard as well. <laughs> 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 It just disappears with the suit. As and as the as suit off, the beard disappears. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so um, have we got like all our equipment back and stuff as well, then as well. You yeah, yeah, it was never yeah, taken yeah, from me. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. I'm assuming when we passed out, we would have dropped it. Yeah, but then people attended to you. So yeah, like when you mm. woke up, all of that you'd have been presented with a Sunday in uh, kind of like multicolored robes that have like bits of armor plating all over them. Um, mm. And they would have handed you a tray that has the two vials, and they would have said, "Drink this and recover," and then leave you to it in an empty room. That was pretty much your experiences. When you drank both bottles, <laughs> a door appeared. Then you just left via the door. You all ended up here. All right. Yeah. Bit trippy, bit surreal. Um. But otherwise, yeah, maybe. You have spent some time, like, knocking on the walls and such to try and find a door out without drinking, but in the end, you all drank. So, here we are. So you all enter the room, and you see this again, this big library that spirals away up and twists at the top, and then uh, the 
the kind of almost cushioned table with the, mar the white marble slab on top of it, um, and like all the kind of different assorted drinks and foods and such, um, the kind of like throw pillow seating um, that's there, uh, the kind of the lamps the, from the vases with the kind of cyan and purple fire, and she kind of just motions with a big smile to welcome you in and obviously to sit at the, the cushions. The seating area in Iaria seems a lot less intimate, like to the point where it suddenly just seems like a bigger group. So instead of, you know, two people on a love seat, it's now it feels more like, you know, a campfire that a bunch of people have went to. Um in terms of the the almost vibe of the place. So yeah. Any uh, reaction is... from Arya as they all walk in? Um I'm I'm just gonna be like, Oh, you're all better as well and I just kinda like walk towards them probably hug Eremos if he seems to be in the Eremos you know, that there. sort of mood. Oh, he's not? No. Okay, I'll I'll turn to, to the princess and say um, I'm sorry, that's that's not all of them. There was a boy with us. Where is he? Okay, one second. So do I actually keep cutting off, guys? Is this an audio thing? Um, that is like the last word or something. Yeah, I think so. Occasionally. Well, I just say babuya at the ev at the end of every sentence. <laughs> babuya, just to make sure that I don't cut off. Babuya. That's probably what. <laughs> <laughs> so keep the working so far, but we're not big fans, or at least I'm not. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, yeah, just keep me no, keep me right, even K keep me no. Yep, keep me in the. Ah, the disease spreads. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. So anyway, um, yeah. So what is it you say to her? Um, I'm I'm like literally looking at all of us, and and you know. Noticing Eremos is not there, so I'm um, going to um, like turn to her and say, "There was another one with us, a child. Where is he?" And she um, again, her face looks very solemn again at the uh, the mention of that, and she says, "Yes, your young companion has not yet regained consciousness. It seems." that he is resistant to the restorative effects that I am and she kind of like pauses and then mm. as if she is really like bemused by this and um, she doesn't make any effort to hide the fact that she's a wee bit stumped at that and she kind of leads she finishes her sentence with uh, that my people are capable of however I was hoping that would be the second thing you would enlighten me to. Maybe try and give him some ink and some paper. <laughs> <laughs> surprise me, you know. So are you all just Tell standing at the doors? Me. Are you all just standing at the doors, or are you actually going to go sit down? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down. down. Yeah. Crumbar just kind of sits at the table and just starts like, and Look. like you know how uh, uh, Aria was like petitely eating away at food. Crumbar's yeah. just stuffing it in his face. Hey, I said I was talking <laughs> while eating, so I wasn't <laughs> petitely or anything. But okay. yeah. Oh, I thought you were like, I can't wait. Go and plug the tea. I'm going to say my head for a Just like stuffing her face. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm laid back, Mix. sipping the tea. Yeah, basically, me, me, me and Kitty are currently in a who can stuff more food in their face, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So. Who speaks first? Because she just kind of sits and kind of smiles and watches everyone indulge. As I'm walking, I say, try give him some ink and some paper. See if anything happens. And she kind of, her eyes dart to you very quickly as you say that, and she says, um, "Is ink something intrinsic to the small child? We did find a tattoo." Covering his body. That's news to us. <laughs> that is actually, isn't it? Yeah. That's... What was the tattoo of? Crumbar just kind of looks up and asks, what, what was the tattoo of? And then she kind of looks over at you and kind of smiles very kind of warmly again at you, 
um, to the point where again, like when you see, you know, her smile at you, Crumbar, you're kind of reminded of again that kind of familial thing of you know your mum smiling at you, you know. Aww. Um, and then she goes, "If you would like one shoes of all, eaten and drank, we could visit the child." I don't think we can wait for Crumbar finishing eating. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, clearly you've never sat at a table with me. Um, and she laughs as well, and she kind of cuts in, and she says, it's so good to have the company of a monk with a sense of humour. <laughs> have you been to see the child already? And she kind of nods and goes, no. Right, I'm just trying to work out if she would know who he is. Um, so how do you know of the tattoo? I was informed by my associates who work for me. That, and obviously that. I'll be very like confused at this moment because, you know, to me it feels like a few minutes since she walked me into this room and you guys were taken away by her people and I've been talking to her and there was no point where a servant or whatever came to give her an update so I'm like mm -hmm. yeah exactly Imagine. like I think the most time that could have passed is 10 minutes for you Arya okay like the most is there anything I could like think of to try to like figure out how she's doing that like <laughs> is there some sort of like knowledge or whatever that I'd have I mean, I don't know. Like, how would you something attempt to figure roll. out how she knows something you don't know how she knows? I don't know. I know that's I mean, that's the answer I was expecting. What, what would I? <laughs> what what? Like, MD can answer this by the way. Telepathy or whatever that she has with her. I mean, maybe right. Somehow? That's I mean, well, that probably is from the realm of magic somehow. I'm guessing. Roll nature for me, and we'll see. Nature. Right? Yeah. In before it was actually just a servant turned up behind Arya, but she had a back to it and she just held up like a sign saying there's tattoos all on the kid's body and like just, yep, nod, <laughs> ran so, off. <laughs> for the whole time she's been playing with an etcher sketch. <laughs> yeah. um, other products like that. We'll be rolling pretty good again. <laughs> so, on that, um, you have spent a lot of time in the forest, the, the wild woods, right? So you've spent a long time there. You know mm. there's a way to just commune with nature without words. Yeah. So the idea that it must be the she, same for people. Like yeah, like the idea that she could just commune with her magical surroundings yeah. probably isn't a stretch for you. But how it's done, or I mean, even if that is a thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's really again a bit. You wouldn't have really got enough on that. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. But you definitely know that you are aware of, even if you haven't done it yourself, you're aware of, like, especially, like, very strong druids and guardians of the forest, for example, um, commu yeah. commune with the forest spirit, right? Mm. The high druid. And yeah. they convey, they never just go, hey, buddy, I'm the high druid, how's it going? It's always a case of somebody turns up and goes, I know what we must do. And then there's a quest. So it's never just, like, words or letters. You know. Fair I enough. They gave me chess or something like that. Always has to be a quest. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we must do. Get the shopping. Quick. <laughs> to the horses. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um MD, any more pressing questions or eating? I assume uh, Kitty and Crumbar are eating. Would she know me? Because like I would, I sort of not grew up in the city, but I spent a lot of time in this city, and you know, seeking advice from people, and she's just like, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, she's like the kind of the head of the place, but it's kind of like living in London and kind of meeting the prime minister, right? It's yeah, I know that's a bit of a touchy subject right now, so let's not get too deep into that conversation, <laughs> but the the gist of, or maybe even like meeting the queen, that type of vibe. Mm. You are aware of their existence, but you. You can't just rock up to them. I am. Um, also, I don't think you would have been that brave to have attempted to steal anything from her. Uh, oh no, not to steal. <laughs> like ask for advice if anything. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. 
<laughs> How does it feel now, boy? <laughs> so fucking oh. funny. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry for those listening at home. We won't explain. And then that's the Patreon <laughs> highest tier level you get all this information at. And Even then, I'm confused right now. Uh, that's fine, don't worry. And uh, yeah, so you you might you might know of her. Uh, you might know that she's very well loved as well. Mm-hmm. And, and like most places, I guess, that have heard of her. Um, which is most places. Um, she's usually the first to kind of lend any kind of aid she can in terms of if some place gets, if a natural disaster hits for some reason, which doesn't mm-hmm. really happen since the Wizard King took over. But mm. like, she is known as a princess of like concern, if that makes sense. I don't mean a concerning princess, but like, she. Uh, she seems to care, you know, about people. Yeah. Um, she doesn't discriminate either. I'm um, like race. She doesn't have any kind of notoriety of racism in any way. Um, well. Yeah, as I said, she's kind of well liked by everyone. Um, even other races that are notoriously racist, for example, against other kind of species, don't really have a grudge against her because they're like, well, she's the best of the bunch, you know, that vibe. Think we should tell yeah, if there's one good person out of it, it's her. <laughs> yeah. However, obviously, again, she is aloof in the sense that, much like her father, she works on a level that's quite above a lot of people's pay grade. So hmm. what she does might not necessarily make sense. If you could like spend a day with her, you might be like, wait a minute, you are so villainous, but not realise that everything she's doing is just, this is the tiniest piece of like a thousand piece jigsaw, you know? Hmm. So, Yeah. That would be something that, again, maybe you've heard this just in your kind of passing, where there's maybe a couple of people in Horizon that obviously maybe have their back up about her, because like, oh, she's up to something, you know? But these are these are definitely people that invented Tinfoil just to wear as a hat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, you are sat, seating yourselves at her table, uh, unless there is any more questions for her. We'll move. No, I think we should go see Aramos. Yeah. I'm interested in what this tattoo is. Anyone else? Is it a metallic Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arr. I mean, I hear we're going to go see the kids, so I'm, I'm just like... And then just grab the plate of food. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. one? He might want food, uh, too. I can, I, I've got... <laughs> Two hands, one to carry the plate, one to stuff it in my face. And a tail to open doors, hopefully. <laughs> yup. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... I... They don't need to open doors, she just needs to follow her. Just True. There. But yeah, so I do have stumpy legs. Well, she stands up I am in motion, she goes, I see that you are all ready to uh, see your friend. And yes, then... please. Mm-hmm. As she says it, she does quickly glance at everyone because she's definitely reading everyone's reactions to her word choice that she has changed every time she's referred to him. And then uh, mm-hmm. she motions towards the big kind of double doors. Um, that again, most of you don't even remember walking in, except Arya. Yeah. So she gestures those, and then she sees that you're carrying the plate, uh, and she turns to you because maybe you're the last one to get out uh, of, the, <laughs> of the kind of cushion pile. And she says, I would have offered you a doggy bag if I didn't want to insult you. <laughs> <laughs> All I can really do is, like, while well, food is still in my mouth, just mm. nod, like, thanks. Crombar, <laughs> did, did I ever say that Crombar would just laugh and go, ha, it's funny because she's a cat. And I think, like, you got, Justoria's clearly laughing herself, do you know what I mean? Like, she clearly found that hilarious. You can see that she's doing that thing where she holds her stomach because obviously her outfit's quite tight. So. Uh, <laughs> And she's like, I am sorry. And then she kind of carries on through the doors that just like open at our command. During all this, I've still got my cup of tea in my hand and, <laughs> and I'm just watching this story the entire time. <laughs> Hammer in one hand, tea in the other. Yep. <laughs> Sips that tea. That's a weird way to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's whatever gets you off, gets you off, right? Oh my god. It's a very English way though, isn't it? <laughs> 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 oh dear thank you listener at home for putting up with us um, <laughs> oh dear so yeah he's head through the doors and 
again, before you know it, you're in a corridor with um, a series of doors. You don't seem to have left a door, though. You are just in a corridor in the middle of it. And there's a whole bunch of doors, and they go off like left and right. And then uh, there's a kind of door that she walks up to, and then she just kind of jet motion, kind of like motions to it. And she said, "Your uh, companion is in here." Hmm. Did, okay. Sorry, did you say he isn't here or is in here? He is in here. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Also, I think I got the closest to Shori Agdashla's voice by making that goddamn joke. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who knew? Uh, yeah, let's uh, head in, lads. <laughs> lads, lads, lads. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I as you like motion up, they kind of like push the door open, I, and it is. It's just again like one of the rooms that you were in. Only this one still has like a kind of a cushioned bed thing. Um, very low down, almost like um, is it something a big kind of feather cushioned sofa? And it's a big huge one, um, as if you would take it off the top of like a chaise long or something. And it's a... Ermos is kind of lying there, with like a kind of silk sheet kind of pulled over him. Obviously up to like his face. I was gonna say like over him like a dead person? <laughs> well I mean for all intents and purposes she has kind of... written him off as that. Based on her inflections. Yeah. Uh, We've got ideas so. though. Yeah. Let's have a look, pull down the bed sheet a little bit, see what his tattoo looks like. Yeah, so it is very stereotypically a kid in very, obviously, decency-appropriate outfits, but enough skin on show so that we can get the, the full effect of this entire all-body tattoo that is all over Aramos, including all over his face. Oh, okay, so now it's on his face as well. Yeah, so... What is it, though? Firstly, I need to go through everyone's character sheets so I can... Do this individually. So, Eric. Hello. I, I'm just I, as I said, I'll go through these all individually. Eric, you see the word in common for stop, okay? You see the word in draconic for stop. You see the word in dwarvish for stop. You see the word in primordial for stop. Shit. I'm noticing a pattern here already, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's a subtle one. Are you? <laughs> Okay. Look, God, you're, you have so many more. Common, <laughs> draconic. You see the word in druidic, which is the thing you should pay the most attention to. Mm hmm. Because only druids speak druidic. Yeah. For stop. Elvish, stop. Sylvan, stop. <laughs> Let me move on to the next character sheet. Grimbar. What if I read it in druidic? If I say stop in druidic? Yeah. Uh, like I'll, I'll I'll like touch my hand where where it's written, and I'll I'll say it in druidic. Yeah. See if it does well, anything. If it helps. We'll get to people doing stuff when I'm. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll finish sorry. my list. It's okay. But we'll get there. Grumbar, you read in common. Stop. You read in infernal. Stop. You read in orc. Mm. Stop. And then. So he's assigning in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the one tattoo this is like thousands of interlocking tattoos all in different languages all over a uh, common draconic dwarvish and elven has all been covered you see all that reach yeah cool. and kitty we have your list as well which is a dwarvish elvish sylvan and your thieves can't as well so they have a language yep yeah. And a bunch of random symbols that say um, it wouldn't be specifically the word stop because thieves can't wouldn't really need a word like that, but it would be like a cease, Ancient no, process. no more yeah. progress. Like you know, it would be a do not enter. It would be a no ingress. Maybe be the best translation. Mm. Um, but it would be like the symbols for that. It wouldn't directly translate to stop, but based on the fact that you're reading these other languages and other words all interlocked with each other all over his body that says stop, you get the gist of it. Um, so yeah, you all look at him and you all see like different parts. There's still like thousands of these tattoos all over him that don't translate because you don't read them. Yeah. And then, Arya, if you want to like touch the druidic words for stop. 
and then yeah, s- say and it. I'll say it as well. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you can touch it and roll perception for me. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. One second, one second, one second. Over ten by now. But... <laughs> well, we've had an eleven, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shh, don't jinx it. <laughs> there we okay. go. Yeah, carrying on the path. You um, you can definitely tell. You're touching the word and not Eremos. If that makes sense. It's as if the word is not part of him. Oh. Like it's like sitting somehow above his skin or something. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Like the book Eric's got. He's got the chain around it. And there seems to be... See when like you move your fingers away when you maybe realise that kind of tactile sensation? It, it moves the slightest, tiniest bit, like ink in water, <laughs> but still keeps the shape of the word. Obviously, can we tell what's going on here? Is it on my fingers as well? Like, nope. it's... Yep. one of two things happening here. Oh. If you're healing, if you continue to try and heal the child, I would try stop it. Did the tattoos appear as your as your people were trying to to heal him? Uh, Jastori never came in the room. Oh shit! Okay, I thought Anyone she joined us. Here? Anybody help a nurse or anything? Can anything? Nope, nobody's in there. Just you guys now. Oh dear, she's very rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like. Well, um, storm was, out of the room and kind of like see if she's just waiting outside or something. I don't so know. Is plugged he... into him or is it she? Is he connected to anything? Oh yeah, his heart rate monitor. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'm assuming he's still alive. I mean, Any how, like, what are you using to assume that, Crumber? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, the like, the, like you know, the fact that like he's. Like they're trying to take care of them. I mean, are they? She just told you she um, couldn't. Right, but... She said nothing my, my people can do to have an effect. Yeah, so what I'm wondering, can I use command to tell him to wake up? What's the wording of command? Wake? No, no. Uh, if you look at the spell, what does it uh, say? What, sorry? What does the spell say? Yeah, it just... Button. Is it not just... Uh, There's a specific bit in it that we're curious about. Da, 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 two seconds, need my thingy sheet. Da, 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 da. Where the hell is it? Oh, no, no, not what that one is. Do you know the strangest like, thing about it, right? You don't even need to hear the word. That's you can so speak weird. A, you can speak a one word command to a creature, so can I not just pick a word to say? Is it a creature? Hmm. I mean, I mean, technically, I'd say it is. Why don't you go and try it? Right, because there's no point meting this. Why don't you just try it, and we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so I'll use a spell slot and command Aramos to wake. Okay, so click the button. Cool. cool. How does this look? I just point at him and it's like a like a very serious is there like a golden glow from your eyes as you shoot this or yeah I was, I was literally <laughs> sorry <laughs> about, i was literally about to say it's just like a kind of like i point at him and like it's like a kind of golden flash comes out as i say the word wake just like a kind of like a go sorry a goat not a golden flash like a mm-hmm. golden aura like that literally just lasts the the length of time it takes me to say wake Mm-hmm. Um, what's everybody else's reaction is Crumbar kind of like shouts magically at Aramos just stuff another bit of food in my face 
It's like, here he goes again. <laughs> the super Matty. Well, he's doing something, so that, you know, can only help. So, you shout command, you point at, obviously, the kid, and you can you have your flash of gold, as it were, mm-hmm. and then, um, I know I can hear Eric saying, always believe, and then <laughs> you roll perception. Uh... I never think. That's I ironic, know. isn't it? You see the tattoos shift ever so slightly in reaction to it. What, just like vibrate kind of shift? Or like. Like as if they all kind of shimmy around, like as if they're playing Tetris with each other. But they're all still interlocking and all still have the ones you can translate. I'll still see what I said. Stop. Okay, I've got an idea. It might be a stupid That's, idea. Oh, my next thing was to use command again to say stop and see what happens. But what are you thinking? I was literally going to go up to the. Don't hit him with I, a hammer. I'm not going <laughs> to hit him with a hammer. <laughs> I was going to go up to him and uh, touch each of the words uh, that I can read and say go. See what that does. Probably nothing, but actually, the, you just have to hit play at the back of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we just need to change these batteries. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, who does what now? So Crumbar just shouted, you know, wake, and then he just kind of stared at the body, and nothing just, happened. Just, just because I'll go first, just because I'm kind of still standing over him. I'm going to use another one, and in Orcish, I'll use command for stop. Okay. And again, it's done in the same fashion of point finger, serious look, flash of gold, and then... It's probably quite, like, angrier as well, the Orcish words for stop. (laughs) And then, do you want to roll perception? Uh, because you rolled well enough last time, you can roll again. Because I was going to see, because I have advantage, but then you clicked the button because I heard the beep anyway. So you can roll once more. <laughs> it didn't matter, it's fine. So, the 12 is what counts, because that would have been with advantage in general. Um, yeah. Maybe they moved, maybe they didn't. But either way, Aramos is still a veg. I mean. <laughs> That would imply alive, so you don't know that. So either way, Eremos is still lying on a very comfortable looking cushion. Covered Can we reset him to factory to settings? I think he's in one of his dream states, to be honest. Mm. Oh, Christ almighty. Mm. But where is dream? Can I try, obviously, you know, what I don't really Crumbar's have Crumbar's just standing over him time. shouting at him, so when he wants to do anything else is... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably a waste, but it's not like we're going to be in combat in the next three seconds, so uh, could I try to heal him? Because I think my healing stuff has worked on him in the past, so... Has it? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. You've never Technically, healed him. yeah, I was about to say, I, I, now that I think of it better, I probably never healed him. But my magic is going to be different than the magic this lady's got here, because my magic is going to be nature mani- and magic, and she's got like bars, yeah. sorcerer magic. So you know, <laughs> worst the worst that could happen, you know. So I'll, okay, I'll cast it at level two. <laughs> Undead pen, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's see if that does anything to. So you cast it at level two, yeah. Yes, please. Cool. Mark off yourself a slot. Oh, and well, then, oh, well. Again, how does this look? Describe how this one looks. Cause obviously, um, I know it's your healing word, but so I will like. Goes on hide. No, 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 no. Like get like close to him and like grab both of his hands into both of mine and like oh, bend my head they, down they, they towards him. Like they don't move. I don't. I don't care. That I'm just being all like mm-hmm. you know. What I means you can't grab his hands and move them? Huh? He's you... like a statue. Yeah, you're. Some force, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're stopped. 
Okay, I will grab one of his hands into both of mine. Okay. And, uh, like, and again, kind of you're, getting, him you're, getting same, <sighs> you're getting the same. You're getting the same kind of tactile response you got when you touched the other word as well. So you know you're not actually making physical contact with him. Oh goodness. Is he like covered, covered in tattoos, or there are like yeah. bits of skin in between the? There are bits oh. of skin in between, but it's, it is like a full-on. Someone's got really drunk and went crazy with a tribal tattoo. Okay, okay. Well, to be honest, healing words are range thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah. hopefully that should still get through to him between the cracks, if that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> between the bits that I just get. I follow you, yeah. Um, Two seconds, guys, I'm getting a phone call. And again, just uh, roll perception. Yes. You can do it at advantage as well, by the way, because you've noticed mm -hmm. stuff with him before. Okay. Okay, let me just get back into this, because I posted like a done number three that I am. Um, so... Advantage and then perception, I believe you said, right? Okay. So, 15 then. Yeah, I. You see your. Your kind of healing word, as it were. And again, there's a kind of movement. They all kind of like. Ripple, essentially. Hmm. Uh, but nothing. Damn. Okay. Um. Right. I feel like it's my turn. You know, I, I think maybe we had the right. You used there. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe maybe the guys had the 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 idea to begin with, to like put him next to his inks and stuff. So I'm just gonna reach into his bag and get his little. He would have like some sort of paper and everything. And well, then I had his book, remember? Ink, yeah, his book, and I have his ink, like in there as well. So I'm just gonna put them all like more or less around him, like on his bed, uh -huh. kind of like you know things you'd put three things you'd put in a pentagram mm -hmm. to summon me, sort of thing. Yep. But I'm just putting them in the bed with him, you know, his quill, his ink, his book, and be like, and just whisper to him and like. Hermos, I've got your your ink and your quill and your and your your book here for you. Um, I've, we've been keeping them safe for you, and I'm just gonna see if there's any sort of reaction, any sort of like ears perking at the word book or ink or whatever. Now you hear from the back of the room. Again, the gravelly voice coming. He goes, he has been like that since he was brought in. And you turn around and you can see, obviously, just Doria kind of doing that thing where she's kind of clutching at her kind of neck choker thing. Um, yeah. As if she yeah. seems genuinely concerned. Sorry, guys. That. Yeah. Can I just go to him and put a hand on him and shock and grasp him? <laughs> like, oh. like a, as a resuscitation thing. <laughs> Right, fucking defibs then. <laughs> How often have you used shocking grasp to resuscitate people? Yeah, that 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 does damage, not help. Yeah. So what? Yeah, but it might damage the binding on him. What it was might, it might be like saying? a shield on him. Yeah, but that might be protecting oh, him somehow. So, what happens in the scene? So as I said, she. She breaks the kind of silence after Arya kind of arrays the things around Deramos and says, you know, we've got your things for you. Um, and she's at the back and she just says, he's been like that since he was brought in. Uh, right. He can has I... a dream state and he can go into it at times. Is it, can you tell if he's in a dream state at the moment? Just story. She kind of looks and she goes, how oh, very fascinating. Unfortunately, he may as well not even be lying there, from what I can detect. That could be how his dream state appears, because it can appear as if he is elsewhere. Oh. Hmm. This is very concerning. Is your magic any way of tracking where they could be? 
As I said, he's not even here, according to my magic. Then it should be fine if I zap him, because he's not here. Yeah, but can you track him to any, the other planes? Or? Yeah, track him to where he is. I would need to have something of him to track. Here's a book. book. One in my back. Yeah, we all, we all look towards the book, like right next to him, on the bed. So do you send it to her, or...? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do we notice... Because the book's near, and do we notice anything... Like, do the words on him shift towards it, or... what? Can I roll a perception? Yeah, do you want to do it at disadvantage with your plate of food? Oh no, I've, <laughs> I've finished my plate of food, and you, it is... You, you, you definitely I've have put it not. on the floor and, like, just, just shove it away. <laughs> you, could have sat it, you could have sat it down, but it hasn't changed its size at all. <laughs> It has replenished itself. Fancy. I am full. That's good. And the backpack later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perception. Oh. Yeah, no, nothing's changed according to you. <laughs> oh. Yep. Well. To me, say it hasn't or it has. Just as far as you can tell, nothing's changed. Um, but yeah. Well, I'm not stubborn near him, so yeah, that's my excuse. So, so who's handing her the book? I would. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Cool, yep. So you, like, you take the book off Arya, hand it over to her, and as soon as um, it touches her hands, uh, the lights go out everywhere, everything just suddenly gets put into darkness, and you just hear this horrible wailing screaming sound. <laughs> um, like, off in the distance, like, through, like, a, almost like the down the far side of an asylum hole. And, uh, yeah, every, like, for everybody else, everything goes into monochrome. Justoria is not in the room. The book has fallen to the ground. Um, and we take our break there. Oh, die. Yeah, am I? So I'll see you at nine, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah. Why is it we not yeah. taking books with you when you, you travel? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm never it. taking a book anywhere with me ever again. So hopefully everybody will join us in part two. Uh, goodbye, everybody, so far. Bye. Bye. Bye.